Hey crew, Max von Neumann here. Today, we are going to find the equation of the line in slope-intercept form that has a given slope of three and goes through the given point one, two. We are going to do this assuming we have not memorized the point-slope form, or what some call the point-slope formula. All of this is going to be done at lightning speed. Okay, here we go. We're asked to find the equation of the line that goes through this point here, 1, 2, and has the slope of 3. But in this case, we don't have the luxury of the point slope form or point slope formula. So we're going to have to go through this another way. So you do like you do the other way is you label your slope. You always want to get things labeled out fast. That's why you want to do it on a test. Label things. So let's get this as M. We know that the slope is M and we know we're going through a particular point. Since this particular, we're going to be X subscript one x x subscript one y subscript one because it's a particular point the other thing is we have to know what the slope intercept format is or the slope intercept form is most students call that the y equals mx plus b form so i like to put it over here everything labeled the more things you label on a test the more smooth and comfortable you're going to perform. All right, so we have our y equals mx plus b. All right, so now what I do is I come over here and I write y equals mx plus b. I know it's gonna be in that format. So I write y equals mx plus b. It's a nice format because it's in a function type format. f of x equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b, and now I go through this and I put in my slope. So I know it's going to look like this, y equals 3x plus b. So this is what my ultimate answer is going to look like, except for I'm going to have the b part, the y-intercept, or where it bisects the b where it bisects the y-axis and how do i find that well i can temporarily plug in my points right here so instead of general y and general x i'll make them particular y y is now two equals three times my particular x, which happens to be 1 in this case, plus b. Ah, we practice this a lot. If I have a whole bunch of numbers and I have one variable, I can solve for that variable. So let's real quickly solve for b. So this is going to be 2 equals 3 plus b. All right, so 2 equals 3 plus b, and then we're going to subtract 3 from each side. So let's carry this back up here so we don't run out of space. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. In which case, we know that b is going to equal negative 1. The y-intercept is negative 1. The place where it bisects the y-axis is at negative 1. So now I go back to my final format, which is y equals mx plus b. And this y now isn't particular anymore. It's representing 
all the y coordinates for an infinite amount of points on our line. So each that's going to be an x y, that's going to be an x y, that's going to be an x y, all infinite amount of x y's, and so that y stays y. It's a general y now, not a particular y anymore. Remember, we only made it particular so that we could solve the b, and now we go back to what it's supposed to be. And then the m, which is our slope, think monte for the French to go up. This is the French verb to go up. I'm not sure if that's what it was named after, but to go up. In our case, we're going up. Sometimes it's, it's rise over run. Sometimes it's retreat over run. Either way, this m is our slope and that is three. So we write in our three here. This is our general x. And then we write in our b, which happens to be plus negative one, a plus negative one. But a better way to write it is gonna be y equals three x minus one. So we'll write it that way. Let's shoot it over here. And that's our final answer. It's in slope intercept form. And it looks like a function, which is nice. You could do a, a T chart and graph that. Uh, so here's what the graph looks like. Of course, the graph's gonna look like this, where your Y intercept is at negative one, and your slope is three or rise three, run one. So you rise three, run one, and then here it's containing the point one comma two. I like this method the best because then I don't have to memorize point slope form in order to get the problem done. I can just use my point temporarily to get the B, the Y intercept, and then just plug everything back in. But just so, recall that, that y in the final analysis is just going to be y, the x is going to be x, and the, the m and the b are constants. So once you find them, that's what they are forever. Okay, so I hope that helped. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like the video if you liked it, and we'll see you next time.